Amen. Amen. I feel him in this room, don't you? What a touch of God that's here this morning. Amen. I, I want to I want to mention from, from the outset of this message this morning, we are saddened by the loss of Sister Betty Hodge. And uh, many of you have heard of her passing this past week. And a longtime saint, beyond that even, just a, a lady of prayer and lady of God. She was a joy to be around. And um, her funeral is this week on Tuesday. And uh, viewing starts, I believe, at 10 a.m. to noon on Tuesday. And the service will be at noon uh, at Burrell funeral home, and so those that can, we would love for you to be a part of that going home celebration. The Bible says that precious in the eyes of the Lord are the death of his saints, and uh, while many, and there's a whole lot of family when you get into the Hodge family, and, and we honor Sister Anderson today and your faithfulness to Sister Hodge and your servitude to her, we honor you today, and um, uh, Many, you know, uh, we we grieve and we we um, we're sad that they're gone. But but uh, she's in no more pain. She's she's not crying anymore. She's 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 with Jesus, and uh, I'm so happy um, uh, uh, that she's on to her reward. While we're all sad that she's not here. Um, it's a day of, of thanksgiving. Uh, I, I think we ought to pray for that family uh, before we go forward, that God would just minister to them, bring comfort and bring peace. Would you help me pray right now for the Hodge family, Lord? We pray in Jesus' name. God, I pray for this amazing family. God, pillars in this church. God, we, we pray, Lord, your comfort. God, to her children. God, to her to her family, Lord, to the extended family. God, I pray, Lord, strength, God, into this family today. God, we pray that the comfort and the peace of the Holy Ghost, Lord, would be with them. Lord, your word says you are nigh to them that are of a broken heart. And I know, oh God, in this season, in this moment, in this morning, God, that you are near. And I pray, oh Lord, that your presence, your power, your love, would cover them, would wrap your arms, God. Wrap your arms around this family, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen, amen, amen. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 9 and verse 18 here in just a moment. I want to say we heard such an excellent word this morning and first word with Brother Eric Edwards, aren't we, aren't we appreciative for the Word of God this morning? If, if I had to guess, most of us woke up this morning um, not saying, I wish I could hear a message on fasting. And uh, probably most of you, now there's some of you that are like, that were like, yeah. Um, but most of us... Um, most of us probably did not get up this morning and ask for a message on fasting, but we need it. We need it. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you know you need it. You know you need it. And I, I need it. We need it, don't we? We need to be reminded. I'm thankful for, for the biblical truths, and uh, we need to hear those. And uh, I'm so thankful for Brother Edwards and bringing... bringing um, bringing that word to us today. Give honor to, to our pastor, our pastor's wife and their family. I'm so thankful for them. We're blessed with the best. We really are. And uh, give honor to them today. And uh, my, my niece, Esme, that's weird to say, my niece Esme is in the sanctuary today for the first time. And uh, I'm an uncle. I hope to not be a weird uncle. Some of you said too late, but uh, here we are, and, uh, and that beautiful baby's here, and I'm just, uh, I'm so happy about it, and uh, man, 
Isn't God good? Isn't, isn't it good to be among God's people? I rejoice with, uh, uh, sis, with, with God filling you with this spirit today. I'm so happy for you. Amen. Rejoice with you this morning. I, um, I know and understand my assignment today. And um, the Bible says that the well need not a physician. People that have it all together don't need, don't need help. But I believe this morning that the well or the, the ones that are well off remember the time that they did need the physician. Remember the moment that they did need the healer, the provider, the helper. And so today I'm not going or preaching to the well. I'm preaching to somebody in crisis this morning. I know my assignment. Whether it be physical, mental, I'm preaching to somebody in crisis. And if you will hear and obey the word of the Lord today, God's going to help you. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 18. If you're there, say I'm there. If you're looking at the screen, say I'm cheating. Mm. Matthew nine eighteen. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose, somebody say, Jesus arose, and followed him, and so did his disciples. Jesus arose, followed him, and so did did his disciples. My title on this Sunday morning is when what you want ain't what you got. When what you want ain't what, now I'm not preaching to somebody that's driving a Honda Accord and wants a Corvette. I'm not preaching to you this morning, okay? I'm not preaching to, you know, to to those people. I'm talking to somebody that what you want, what you desire in your life, what you desire for your family and your future is not what you currently have. I'm preaching to you this morning. Jesus, I pray today, I know we've already prayed, but God, I pray one more time, God, that your word would be delivered with clarity. God, that it would speak, God, exactly to who you wanted to speak to. God, your word is quick and powerful. It's sharp. It's able to pierce God beyond all of the outer stuff and get right to where we're living. And I pray that that's what would happen today. God, minister to these wonderful people that you died for in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Turn to a couple people around you say, when what you want ain't what you got. We can say it like that. Because we're from Zanesville. I was in Massachusetts this past week, and they'd probably say it like, what you want ain't what you got. Something like that. Matthew chapter 9, jump down into the story with me if you would. Jairus was, or Jairus was, was in a panic. His daughter had just passed away, and um, I I can't fathom um, being in that situation where my child had had just taken his last breath. I I can't imagine that, but here Jairus was in a situation, the Bible doesn't detail the sickness or the issue, but the Bible says that, that his daughter died. His daughter died. And the Bible tells us that there came a certain ruler, this Jairus. There came a ruler to Jesus. And the Bible says in Matthew 9 and 18 that when Jairus came to Jesus, he worshipped him. Somebody say he worshipped him. Now, now I I, um, would love to believe that my first response would be the response of Jairus. I, frankly, I, I don't know. I hope that that would be my first response. But, but we see here at the beginning that, 
that Jairus made the right decision by not running away from Jesus when crisis was in his life, by not getting mad at Jesus when crisis was in his life. But the Bible says rather that when Jairus had lost his daughter, he went to Jesus and he worshipped. He worshipped. Can I tell somebody in this room that when you are in the midst of crisis, when you are in the midst of loss, when you are in the midst of mourning, it is not the will of God that you run away from him. It's not the will of God that you become mad at him. It is the will of God that you run to him. For Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Friend, I may not understand your situation or the things that life has dealt you, but I do know that there is a friend in heaven named Jesus who sticks closer than a brother, that at the time of trouble and at the time of crisis, God is near or nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Amen. And save it such that be of a contrite spirit. You hear me please this morning. When crisis is in your life, run to Jesus. When crisis is in your world, run to the Lord. I believe there's somebody under the sound of my voice on this Sunday morning that you're not here because you came just to see a friend. You're not here because you you wanted a cup of coffee and, and, and looked forward to the small talk in the foyer. I, I believe that there's somebody that came here this morning that made up their mind, listen, I'm in trouble, and I know that if I'm in trouble, I know i got to get to Jesus. Come on, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be in this room if you didn't know where to run to, but somebody in this room, uh, you're in trouble. And can I tell you that I've got good news uh, for you on this Sunday morning? You're in the right place. You're in the right place. This is not a nursing home for those people who have been saved all of their life. This is a hospital for the broken. This is a hospital for the hurting. I don't know what you've come in here with, sir. I don't know what you've come in here with, ma'am. But God wants to help you. God wants to bind up your wounds and bring strength to your life. When Jairus, when, when he lost his daughter, he didn't run from Jesus. He ran to Jesus and worshiped. Amen. The Bible uh, tells us in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 17 that the spirit, meaning God, and the bride, meaning his church, say, come. Amen. There is an agreement today between heaven and this church. We don't care who you are. We don't care your past. We don't care your crisis. There was a moment in my life, in Cody's life, where God answered a prayer that no man could answer. And so I tell you on this Sunday morning that God and his church are saying, come. Ye who are weary, come. Ye who are hurting, come. You who are broken, come to Jesus today. He didn't get, Jairus didn't get mad at God. He didn't get upset with God. He came to God. Don't get upset with the one that can help you this morning. Amen. You might have questions and loss and things in our life. Bring a thousand questions with no answers. But I've come to tell you, don't resent the one that can help you. Don't resent the one that can bring healing to your life. Amen. Jesus didn't do it, but he can use it and he can help you through it. Amen. God can help you through the midst of your storm. Somebody say amen. The Bible goes on to say in Matthew 9, and I'm not going to be long today. I'm going to obey what I feel. In Matthew 9 and 18, there came a certain ruler who worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her. Watch. And she shall 
live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Jairus made the bold statement to ask Jesus to come and pray for his daughter that was dead. It was at that moment, you've got to, you've got to imagine, jump into Matthew 9 with me for a moment. There's crowds everywhere. There's people all over the place. People are trying to get to Jesus. Matter of fact, on the way to Jairus' house, there was a lady with an issue of blood that stopped him. And there's, there's crowds all over the place. People are trying to get to Jesus. They've seen what he's done. They've seen the work of his hand. And, and Jairus, in the middle of that crowd, he said, Jesus, come to my house. He said, Jesus, I know there's all kinds of people around here, but please come to my house. It seems insensitive almost that Jairus would call Jesus away from the crowd and the, and the, and the room full of needs or the, or the place full of needs. But at that moment, Jairus was not concerned about other people. Jairus was concerned about his present condition. And Jairus was not going to let the looks or the, or the snarls or the attitudes of other people to talk him out of getting to Jesus. Jesus, and I've come to tell you today that it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how big of a crowd that you're in. Jesus is such a personal God. Jesus is such a specific God that in the middle even of a crowd like this, Jesus is willing, ready, and able to come right to where you are living. He really is. Bible says he's not a respecter of persons. Jesus doesn't respect. He doesn't respect what you've done or where you've been. It doesn't matter who you are. Jesus on this Sunday morning is willing to come to where you are. He's a gentleman. He won't come unless you invite him. But when you invite God to get involved in your personal life, in your personal stuff, God has a way of always showing up. Anybody ever been a moment in a moment in your life where, where you invited the Lord to come into your mess and he showed up? Come on, to come into your stuff and he got involved. Amen. When we ask, he said, ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Seek and you will find. What was he saying? If you come to me, I'll respond, but you've got to come to me first. Jairus made the first move, and Jesus responded to this, to this act of faith. That, uh, come to my house and, and, and lay your hand upon her, and she shall live. Amen. When you get desperate, I'm, I'm not preaching to everybody this morning, but I know who I'm preaching to today. There's somebody in this room that is desperate for change in your life. It might be individual change. It might be change in your family. But there's somebody in this room that's desperate for change in your life. Desperate. You come here hungry, looking, searching. God, do you know where I'm at? Do you know what I'm going through? Do you know? I've come to tell you God does know where you're at. And you can't look at him and respond to him with a, with a begging posture. Oh, Lord, I know I don't deserve it. I know I haven't done everything right. You can't come to God begging. You've got to come to God with faith. Lord, I'm asking you, Jairus said, come to my house, lay your hand on her, and she shall be healed. I've come to tell somebody that, amen, if you'll come to God with faith, Jesus, if you could just lay your hand on the dead stuff in my life, that dead stuff's going to come back to life. That dead stuff's going to change if you'll get involved it's impossible to please God without faith and if you'll come to God with faith believing that what you pray he hears and he will respond to listen to me just like he responded to many in this sanctuary today that same God will respond to you somebody say faith 
you got to have faith. He said, my daughter's dead, but lay your hand on her and she shall live. And here's the amazing thing. Jesus went to Jairus' house. He left the crowd. He left all of the people that were trying to get to Jairus, that were trying to get to Jesus. He left all of them to go to Jairus' house. I don't know who you are today or where you've been, what you've been through or what you've done, but Jesus is willing and he is ready to come to your house. He's willing to get involved in where you are living. He's willing to get involved in the mess of your life. This this is, the, this is probably one of the only times in Scripture that Jesus followed a man. Jesus followed Jairus to his home. Well, I want to follow Jesus, but there's somebody in this room that needs Jesus to follow them. You need Jesus to follow you to the issue. You need Jesus to follow you to your house. You need Jesus to follow you to your mess. And Jesus followed Jairus. And watch the story. Watch how the story unfolds with me, if you would, in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 23. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house, he saw minstrels and people making a noise. And he said unto them, Jesus said to them, Give place, for the maid is not dead, but sleeps, but sleeps. Now, Jesus showed up to the house of Jairus, and when he got there, the Bible records two types of people that were there. Turn to your neighbor and say, two types of people. The Bible says that there was much noise in the house. There was people making noise in that house. And number two, the second thing that was there was minstrels. If you study that word, that means that there were people playing funeral music in the house. Now, now get this. Jairus goes to Jesus. My daughter is dead. Come lay your hand on her. She's going to live. Jesus and Jairus go home. But everything in Jairus' home says she's already dead. Jairus wants the girl to live, but everything that's in his house says she's already gone. Funeral music was playing. It was almost as if the service was already going on. There was, there was a noise in the house, Brother Edwards. There was, there was a lot of commotion in the house, and, 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 and it was a part of the culture where people would get involved and show up and mourn for, for the loss. And, and there was much noise in Jairus' house. See, everything in the house of Jairus said that she was already dead. But in the heart of Jairus, there was something in him that said, I want her to live. And here we have the conflict in which Jairus lived that what was in his heart did not match what was in his home. What was in the heart of Jairus was not in the home of Jairus. In the heart of Jairus, live, come to life, pray, lay your hand on her, and she's going to live. In the heart of Jairus, that was the heart, but in the home, it was dead. Everything was, everything was surrounding the death of the home, and there's a conflict in Jairus because he knows what he wants in his heart, but he also sees the reality of what's in his home. And some of you know God, I feel the Lord in here. Some of you know what you want to do, what you want to become, what you want your family to look like. It's in your heart. But everything showing up in your home doesn't match what's in your heart. Your heart says, I'm tired of being addicted. But your home says, it's still in the fridge. My heart says, I'm tired of being depressed. But the home says, let's go back and listen to that stuff that makes you depressed. 
You got desires in your heart to be changed and to be different. But what's in your home? What's in real life when you go home on Sunday? What, what, what's a part of the there's There's a difference there. There's a difference in your life. And you hear me on this Sunday morning just because there's a difference between your heart and your home. It doesn't make you a bad person, but it does make you somebody who needs to make a decision in your life. If you're going to see the things in your heart come to pass, there's got to be something that happens in your home. There's got to be a change that happens, amen, right where you're living. Jesus did not come to give you a momentary happiness. He came to give you life and life more above. That means on Sunday, on Wednesday, on Monday, when you lay your head on the pillow, God wants to give you peace and life right where you're living. It's one thing to come here and, oh, hi, how are you? You know, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord mean, means hello, by the way. In the Greek, it means hello. Somebody says praise the Lord to you in here. That means hello. They're, they're being friendly. They're not weird. They're being friendly. And uh, I say it to them. But, but it's one thing to have it together here. It's one thing to be able to shake the hands and smile and say hello and, 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 and do all the small talk and the things right. It's one thing to get all of that and, and have all of that good and fine. But it's another thing for God to show up right where you're living. And you don't need, hear me, you don't need God just to take care of the momentary thing. You need God in your home. God's interested in getting involved in your home. He's interested in getting involved in where you're living. He's interested in getting involved in your life if you'll allow it. Jesus shows up to the house of Jairus. My, I feel the Lord here. Shows up to the house of Jairus and there's funeral music and there's much noise in the house and Jesus says, give place. He said, make room. Make room. Give, give place for me. Give place for me and watch. Watch. He said, give place for the maid is not dead. Jairus, your daughter is not dead. She's just sleeping. Ma'am, your future is not dead. It's just dormant. Your future's not over. It's just been on pause for a moment. That's a word for somebody in this room. Your future's not over. It's just been dormant for a little while. Don't call it dead. It's just sleeping right now. But let Jesus get his hands on it. Let Jesus get his hand on your future and see it come back to life. He said the girl's not dead. She's just sleeping. I can't leave it. Your future's not dead. Your future's not done. You, you, it's, you, you've just taken a break from it for a minute. To, to you, you've, been, you've been sitting in your mess. You've been sitting in your stuff wondering if there's a way out. I've come to tell you there is a way out. There is a way out. And his name is Jesus. Jesus said, he said, give place. Give place for the maid is not dead, but she sleeps. And watch what happened. And they, somebody say they. Throw Matthew chapter, I want you to see this 9 and 24 up there. Jesus spoke in the house of Jairus, for the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. Who was they? They was, it's not proper English, the people playing the funeral music and the people making noise. Jesus speaks the promise. Jesus speaks that she's not dead, she's just sleeping. But the stuff that's in Jairus' house is laughing at the promises of God. Some of you got some things in your life that's laughing at the promises of God. You got some stuff in your world that's laughing at you. 
it's laughing at you. Oh, you're, you, you went to church today. <laughs> That's hilarious. Nothing's going to change. It's going to be the same. You're going to go to church and you're going to leave the same way you came and you're going to mess with the same stuff you mess with. You're going you're gonna to fall into this stuff laughing at you in your life. What is it that's laughing at you? What is the thing that's laughing? What is, what is the narcotic? What is the, what, is the, what is the secret that nobody knows? What is the thing that is laughing at you every time God shows up to do something in your world? What is it? There's something laughing at you. There's something that's saying it'll never change. Oh, she's dead. She, can you imagine? Could you imagine being in a house with a dead girl? And those people go from mourning to laughter? How insulting. How insulting. You, what do you mean you're laughing? My dog. See, the stuff that's laughing at you, it, oh, you think it's comforting you. You think, it's com you think when you go home, that stuff comforts you. I don't know what it is, but you think it comforts you. In reality, what it does is just keeps the future dead. Stay asleep. Stay dead. Oh, law, law that desire. Oh, I know where I'm at in the Holy Ghost if I've ever known. Law that desire for change. Back to sleep, Jairus. Just, just, just listen to me sing. Just listen to me talk. Just, oh, I'm so sorry. You didn't deserve this. You're, you're, you know, da, 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 da. Just, just listen to me. Let me, let me put your future back to bed. All the while. Jesus shows up in your world. God gives you a promise of a future, and they laugh. They laugh. You're, you're not, you're not going to change. You're not able to make a deal. You're not able to get out of the cycle you're in. Go back to bed. Put your faith back to bed. It's just an emotional preacher at a, at a, at a, at a church that people get excited. And, and it, it, it's, just, it's just something they do. And just, just go back to bed. Just, just, just stay. Just do what you've always Do your nine to five and get up and go to bed and get up and go to bed and live for the weekend and be miserable. Just, just go back to bed. Don't, don't put your faith on it. Don't, 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 don't pray and hope for change in your life. Just, just go to sleep. Shh, shh, Jairus. Uh, shh, Jairus. Don't, don't, don't do this, Jairus. Don't, don't disrupt the normal, Jairus. Don't disrupt the routine, Jairus. Don't disrupt the protocol, Jairus. Don't, don't step out and do something faithful. Don't, don't step out and do something crazy, Jairus. We're mourning, Jairus. Shh, she's dead, Jairus. She's gone, Jairus. Shh, Jairus. Shh, she, she, she's, she's not sleeping. She's dead, Jairus. Shh, your future's not sleeping. Your future's dead, Jairus. Shh, you'll always be what you've always been, Jairus. Shh, shh, go to bed. Go to sleep. Turn it on again. Go through your routine again. But I hear, I hear the sound of a God that has showed up on this Sunday morning. I know what stuff in your house is saying. I know what things are saying in the privacy of your life. I know every voice that's spoken against the, the, the things that God wants to do. I know that reason is playing with some of you. Some of you are trying to explain it away, but you better hear this preacher on this Sunday morning. Jesus wants to change everything. Don't fall prey to the voices that are saying stay asleep. Don't fall prey to the people in your life that just want to keep you have you ever noticed that people, people that are down want you to be down with them? You ever notice that when you start bringing change to your life that people have a number of doing this? Don't do that. Don't, don't make changes in your life. That stuff doesn't, that church is crazy. What are you thinking going there? Have you ever noticed that when you start to try to do something better that people all of a sudden get spiritual? Oh, don't go to that church. 
They ain't been to church their whole life. What do you mean don't go to that church? They get spiritual all of a sudden. Oh, that won't help you. Well, how do you know? You've been in the mess with me. Listen, you can't listen to you can't listen to stuff that's been in your home and in your life for years. They ain't helped you yet. But there's a God that showed up into your world this morning. You got to make room for him. You've got to give place to his voice. You've got to give place to him because he wants to change everything. Stand with me all over the building. There was, there was a desire in the heart of Jairus. What was in the home of Jairus didn't match it. Jesus said, give place or make room for me. Jesus said, the maid's not dead but sleeps. They laughed him to scorn. But watch what Matthew 9 and 25 says. But when the people were put forth. Somebody say he kicked them out. Jairus. It doesn't say Jesus kicked them out. He, I, I don't think he did kick them out. It wasn't his house. You can't, you can't show up at somebody's house for the first time and say, everybody out. <laughs> That'd be weird, right? Like, what are you doing? You just got here. You just, what? can't do that. I don't think Jesus kicked him out. You want to know what happened? I think Jairus said, time for y'all to go. <laughs> it's time for y'all to get out of here. It's time for you to move on out of here. Because what I want, you ain't given. What I want, you ain't helping me with. What I want is my daughter to come back to life. And you're not helping anything. So if you're not going to help, you might as well get moving. Because Jesus is getting ready to speak the word. Jesus is getting ready to change absolutely everything. And when the people were put forth, Next three words, so powerful. He went in. When they, when they were gone, he went in and took her, took her, the future, the next generation, his family. I don't know what it looks like for you, but he took her. He took her by the hand. And the maid arose. Because anytime Jesus touches something that's dead in your life, that dead thing can't help but respond to its creator. So I've come to tell somebody on this Sunday morning, there's dead stuff in your world, things that you've written off as dead and gone. But if you would just let the master, if you would just let the creator get a hold, amen, of that part of your life, there's a future. There's still breath there. There's still breath there. There's still life. There's still life in your marriage. You got to let Jesus get his hands on it. There's still life for your kids. You got to let Jesus get his hands on it. There's life. There's life. There's life. There's life. There's a future for you. You got to let Jesus get his hands on it. Every head bowed and every eye closed. We're getting ready to come pray as a family. But if, but if today, if today what you want isn't what you've got, if what you want isn't what you currently have, if I've preached to you today, if the Lord is dealing with you, I want you to slip your hand in the air. Nobody's looking around. I see hands all over the building. I see hands all over the building. You can put your hand down. Jesus, 
is ready and willing to get his hands on what's in your life. I'm asking everybody that would, they're going to begin to sing and play. I'm going to ask that we would come to this altar as a family. If you raise your hand, I'm asking you especially, please don't miss your moment. Don't miss this opportunity to come in contact with the Lord. If you're not comfortable with coming to the, the altar, that's fine. Just lift your hands right where you are and Jesus can touch you even in the pews. But let God God, let God get his hand on what's going on in your life. Come on, I'm speaking to somebody. There's still life. There's still hope. There's still a future. Come on, invite the Lord. Come on, invite the Lord. Some of you might not know what to pray in this moment. Just say, God. I need you to put your hands on this. Come on, name it, God. I need you to put your hands on this. I need you to get involved in this. Come on, all over the building. He hears your prayer. He hears the cry.